So welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about social media marketing strategy. Uh, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about are going to be in general things that you can use for social media marketing strategy, but I'm going to really drill into Facebook and Instagram specifically for it. Um, so this is my business, uh, Empowered Social Media. I've been around for over a year now. Uh, I've been doing social media marketing for eight years now, and I'll kind of get into my story a little bit and how I got into. So about it, a little over eight years ago, I decided I was going to join Facebook. And the reason I joined Facebook was because, well, now this is actually my wife over here. She's, she's here to support me today. <laughs> so, so my wife and I were friends. Um, we met at a, a job together, and she went away to Ireland. And I didn't have her phone number to connect with her, and I was trying to continue to have a friendship long distance. So I decided I was going to do that by joining Facebook and being connected. So that's going to be a reoccurring theme that we talk about is connecting. How do you use, I mean, with social media, there's, there's a dark side to social media, right? And then there's a positive side to it. So that's what I coach. That's what I talk about, the positive side to social media. And a big part of that positive side is connecting with other people. Great. So things we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about the Facebook algorithm. We're going to talk about the Instagram algorithm, the golden rule. We're going to talk about the bank best practices and some of the trends that are coming up right now in social media. So for me, I've worked with, I think at this point, around 20 different local businesses. I've done event marketing. I've done marketing in the fitness realm. I've done that for restaurants, for meal prep businesses, um, for racing events too. So not like driving racing events, but like going for a run, like 5K and, and half marathon events that I've done a lot of my marketing for. So let's start to dive into it. Actually, before we start diving into it, um, how many people in here uh, do business, social media for businesses? C couple people? Okay, so a lot of people, this is just personal, like getting to know, figuring out more about social media, how it works kind of thing. Anybody in the future thinking about starting a business or using social media to work for or build a business? I got a little bit more for heads. All right, great, perfect. So this is the place to be for that. So you're gonna, we're gonna get some basics. We're gonna get intermediate level. And then we may even get some advanced topics in here. It's, this is kind of working as a crash course. All right, so we're gonna move fast through to some different things. We'll have time for questions. So if you have questions at any point, ask the questions. You can stop me in the middle of it and we can discuss it. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to know more about some of these different platforms. So let's talk about the Facebook algorithm. So we're looking at posting, right? If you put a post on Facebook. Now you have two different sides. You have a personal side on Facebook, right? So you, um, you connect with people on Facebook. On the personal side, right, you post, on, you post something on Facebook on your wall uh, in your news feed, and then people who are connected with you may be able to see it, right? Some people use it like I did to connect with now my wife, who wasn't my wife back then, um, or friends, or get to, get to know new people. You see them, you connect with them, right? You build friendships, you can do that. So we have the post that you'd put. This is a business post that we're talking about right now. So there's different things that we're thinking about when we have a business post or a post in general. We have the copy, right? What you're writing in the post. You have the creative, like what's happening. This is, of course, my face in here. And then we have the reach. So this is, this is the post I put out. I put this out a couple days ago leading up into today, the talk that I'm having today in here. So we have a community. We have a community of people. Now, if you um, friend somebody on Facebook, right, you may have 200 friends, 300 friends, 400 friends, 500 friends. That's kind of like your friend community. Now, when you have a business, they're, consider, they're called likes. They're called uh, followers. Those are people who follow your business, who are going to see what you put out for posts. So, for instance, for me, for my page Empowered Social Media, I have 650 people who follow my page. Now. That's my community that I have right here. If I post something, if we're thinking about, there, there's a couple different circumstances where this, this doesn't work, but the, the max amount of people I can reach is that 650 people, the people who have decided they're going to like my page and they follow my content on the page. So this is what, what it's saying is the post that I put out in here, it's reached 145 people. 
Now, is that if you have a page and you have people who like your page, those are individual people who like your page. So you may see, all right, this page has 640 likes on it, but it has 650 followers. What that means is that the discrepancy in that 10, 640 likes to, to followers are business pages. So it's 10 business pages that have decided that they're gonna quote unquote endorse your page with their page. There's a couple different ways that you can do that and you can like another page as your business page. It's just endorsing it, showing that you're, you're part of that community, you're part of that network, they're with you. So in this post, I reach 145 of the potential 650 people I have. Uh, I had 20 different likes. I had, there's comments and shares. So these are just the different things, different elements of a post. So you have comments in here, two people commented, the comments below. And then if this was shared, which is right here, you have the share option, I could choose, and I did after I put this together, I could choose to share something on my business page to my personal page. And then I can reach a bigger audience because I have more people that I'm friends with than are connected to me through my business. And then we have total engagement in here. So we have 145 people who are reached, 34 of those people engage in my content. I mean, that may look like a, a small number, right? You're like 145, what happened to the other people? It's, it's just how it is, right? People, the content reaches certain people and then there's different ways that they can interact if they're deciding to like your content, if they're deciding to share the content, if they're deciding to click on. So if we, add up everything, right? We had 34 engagements at 34, right? We had 20 likes, that's 20. We had two comments, 22, but we had a total engagement of 34. So that's 12, a difference of 12 right there looking at that. That 12 is because people have clicked on something inside of here. They could have clicked on the picture, right, to blow it up more if they wanted to see my face a little more closely. My wife, she probably did that. <laughs> 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> or you have right here, if someone clicked on Deerfield Academy, right? TEDx inside of there. So this is just looking at generally what's happening, some of the numbers that you're experiencing it, what it means. Um, so this is the comment, the, the, what are page likes, what are page followers. Now there's, there's um, we saw 145 out of um, the potential people that I have. So it's actually 634 likes. So 145 reach that I made out of 634 people who like my page, I have 22.8% of people that, that saw my content on here. Um, this, is, this right here is a really important number. It's an important number because sometimes you can put out a post, you can put out content and you have 145 people reach. Sometimes you have 60 people reached. Sometimes you have 250 people reach, it depends on your page. But what, it, what this gives you doing this little formula gives you an indicator at 22.87%. Next time when I post something, I only got 10%. What's the difference between the two? One of them is more engaging than the other one. Why is it more engaging? So as you post, you can see, and you can do this equation for all of your posts in the future and start to figure out what are the posts that are performing the best out of it. So what is a healthy range when you're posting your content, a healthy range depends on industry, right? So if I'm in the restaurant industry, I post something with food, it's gonna blow up. Really, unless I'm doing it wrong, because people love food, right? We love to see food. I had someone I sat down, one of, my, one of my clients, I sat down with him and I was talking about apartments because we're a marketing apartment complex. And he said to me, we were talking and joking about social media. He's like, nobody wants to see what I ate for lunch today. And I was like, you are wrong. <laughs> you may not know anybody right now who wants to see what you ate for, but people are interested in that kind of thing. So for restaurant industry, so for me, I had a 22.8%, but if, does anybody, do we live in the area? Some of us? All right, do we know Leo's Table? Yeah, so I was part of the team who started Leo's Table, all the marketing alongside them. So we had days where we put out posts and we get over 100%. Right, we're getting because not only are we getting the entire uh, our entire community, but people are sharing it on their page. So now you're getting people in their community who don't aren't part of our community because they don't like our page right now. 
we're sharing outside of that and we're reaching more people. So for someone like Leo's table was big every time, you know, they're posting food or breakfast sandwiches or they have like a chicken parm sandwich. Those are really engaging things. We want to see those. We're clicking on it. We want to blow that picture up, right? We want to see it. We want to imagine it in there. So an industry like restaurant industries it is really big and you're going to get more engagement out of it. But an industry that, that is not so big uh, is, is social media marketing. <laughs> Because it's a niche, it's a really niche industry, right? Some people, you know, all of you all came in, you had a reason, right, that you wanted to, but there's a lot of people who don't really care about social media or don't care about the social media marketing aspect of it, right? It's a little bit more niche than, than uh, a donut, right? A donut, well, more people like donuts than are interested in social media marketing. So a healthy range depends on industry, but you're looking at something between 10% 10, 10 and up is really what's gonna be good. All right, so let's talk about the story of a post. What happens, right? As a creator, so I've had days where I've spent two hours, three hours, maybe four hours creating a post that I'm so invested in. I'm like, I spent so much time doing this. I put it out and it gets to nobody, right? Or I've had days where I put little thought into something, I put it out there and it gets to tons of people. I'm like, oh my, what, what am I doing wrong in here? So let's talk about the story of a post. What's going on? when you start doing a post. All right, so this is my, my head. This is indicating what a post is. Now, for Facebook, Instagram, for social media platforms, they're looking for the best user experience. They want people on their platform as long as they possibly can, right? It makes sense for them because as users, we don't pay for it, right? But we have advertisers out there who are paying money to get in front of us. The more people that are on their platform, the longer they're on their platform, there's more opportunities to get advertising out there for them. So they wanna create the best user experience. They want people to stay on their platform as much as possible. That's why if you get into social media or you're, if you decide to share content, like for instance, we have, um, today we're, we're videoing this, right? And this is gonna go on YouTube, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, so it's gonna go on YouTube. Now if I take my link right from YouTube and I drop it in my post on Facebook, and I, I do that as a post, it's not gonna perform well unless there's incredible user experience. The reason it's not gonna perform, perform super well is because what's happening? They're clicking on it and they're leaving Facebook to go to YouTube, which is competition, right? They don't wanna do that, right? They don't wanna give away the person who's on their platform to another platform that's completely different. So some different types of posting that you can do can actually hurt you or just not get you as much reach. So if I'm putting, if I put a post out, right? I have that potential 650 people that I'm trying to reach. It's starting to show up in some people's news feeds. Facebook is actually, when you put the post out, it's reading all of the words that you put in your content. It's looking at your picture, the algorithm, this is what it's doing. It's looking at the picture and it's deciding what's in the picture, right? So it's gonna say like one male smiling is what it's seeing because it's reading your picture. Or, say, or if I had a dog with me, right? It's gonna be like one male, one puppy in the picture. So it's looking at what you're putting in your content, it's what you're putting in your creative, and it's deciding on those criteria, people on Facebook right now who are in your community, who've interacted with those things in the past. We wanna get it out to them because they know that they're probably gonna have the best user experience. So it pops up, right? It's some, in someone's newsfeed, right? You're on Facebook or your Instagram, you're scrolling, you see it, right? For a second. Now, if people see it, but there's no reason for them to take action, right? They're like, oh, like I don't get it or whatever. I'm not gonna like it. I'm not gonna comment on it. I'm not gonna share it. I'm not gonna click on it. Boom, like it stops. Because Facebook sees, all right, this is not getting a great user experience. We don't wanna send it out to more people because we want people on our platform and then it dies, right? A gruesome death. No one ever sees the post again. It reaches 50 people out of your 650 and we move on from that. So um, once we get to content and talking about posting and how often you wanna post, we'll talk about why it's important that you always put out good quality content. So now let's think about a different way, right? So put out a post, people contemplate, and then we get over here, right? Someone likes it, someone uh, comments on it, someone clicks on it. So once that happens, it's signaling to Facebook, all right, we're getting some good user experience out of it. Let's find the next set of people. We're gonna send it out 
to an, the next set of people. It could be people that are connected with those people who are also engaged with your page as well as looking for the next set of people. And when it does that, if they start to engage with the content, it sends it out to more people. So it's moving it. As people engage with it, it's working. It's working and it's reaching more people off of it. Great. So that was just an introduction of the Facebook algorithm. We'll talk about the Instagram algorithm now. We'll talk about how they're different, what's going on with the different platforms. And then we'll break down some things, th some things to think about, some best practices, what you can use. And we can talk about 2020 trends, what are happening right now in social media. All right, so before we saw a social media post, the copy was at the top of it. It's just a different layout when it comes to Instagram. It's a different way it shows what's happening. Right before, we, we see hearts now. It was likes before, now it's hearts. We have comments right here. Then we have two new categories that pop. Well, there's a share category, so we had that in both, but a new category that pops up, which is a save category. So we're just looking at the difference of them. So with Instagram, one of the big differences between Facebook and Instagram are hashtags. How many people in here know what a hashtag is? We got, we got, all right, yeah, yeah. All right, so hashtags are like indexing, right? It's, it's indexing your post. So when I put a hashtag out, so if I say hashtag community, right? People who, in, who engage with hashtags, like that hashtag, hashtag community, are more likely to see that post in the future. So it's just a way to index what you're doing in the post. So I might have a set of hashtags that I always use. I'm one of my hashtags, empowered social media, right? Or empowered social or social media marketing, social media tips. Those are things that work for my brand that I put out every time for them. So hashtags are really, really important because not only the indexing, they let people know what the content is about, but it actually allows you with hashtags to reach beyond your community. So with Facebook, right, we had that 650 people. We could hit that 650 people max unless someone shared it outside, right? They shared it on their own personal page, then we can reach more. Now with Instagram, you can add hashtags to it and people who don't look at your content, who aren't friends with you, could see it because they follow a specific hashtag because that's something that they're interested in. So hashtags are really important, maximizing your hashtags. And I'll tell you, I'll talk about how many hashtags are necessary. Yeah. Do hashtags work the same way on Facebook? Because people use it on Facebook all the time, but is it the same? It is not. It is it's not. Like yeah, so uh, sometimes people don't realize that it's not the same thing. So they might hashtag on both sides. Um, sometimes it's, it, it, sometimes it adds the post, right? So if we use like ironic hashtags, like that's something that adds to it or something that's on the theme with it, that then it maybe it makes it funnier, makes it entertaining out of it. That's when hashtags really work on Facebook. So another thing about Instagram, which is, which is difficult for a user, someone who is going on the business side of it, is that Instagram is three platforms in one. So with Facebook, right, you had your newsfeed, you can post on it. With Instagram, you have your newsfeed, you have your stories, that's what's happening in the moment, and then you have IGTV. I'm not gonna dive too much into it, but I wanna explain the differences between what's happening there. So as, as um, platforms, Instagram is a little bit faster moving platform. There's more content, it's fresh, right? We wanna see what's happening now. Newsfeed is part of that, right? It tells the story that you're going through, right? I might post once a day, I might post twice a day, I might post three times a week, right? It tells my story, what's going on through the week. Now, stories themselves are what's happening in the moment. So they're, they're, when you post on your Instagram story, it's something that lives for 24 hours, and then it's gone. So it's not the, the, it, it's not the same as uh, Facebook where you may feel like high pressure, right? I got to put this post out, got to make sure it's really great. It's got to be perfect. It's going to be polished, right? Because it's on Facebook forever. With a story, like you can put something out and it's gone in 24 hours and people can't see it again. So it feels, it can feel less pressure, right? Because you can just put it out. It's also more authentic because you can see what's happening right now. You can't use the copy, right? You're not using this in here. It's just a picture, right? You have a little bit of copy that you can add to it. There's a bunch of other tools that you can, but it's more of a visually engaging type platform. And then you have IGTV. So you got your newsfeed, you got your stories, 
and then IGTV is their way to compete with YouTube, right? So it's their video platform. Now, Instagram, because it's so quick moving, wasn't built to have long form video on it. It's not made like that. So you can put a video 60 seconds or less. You can't put anything longer than that on your newsfeed. Same thing when you get into stories, stories are 15 seconds. So you can do a minute story, but you have to break it into 15 second chunks to put into your story. Well, to compete with something like YouTube, which where people watch, watch videos hours and hours and hours and consume content, they created IGTV, Instagram television, where it's a specific channel where you have the longer form content where people can watch for minutes and minutes and minutes, hours and hours and hours on Instagram television. Um, they're all interconnected. And I'm not going to dive too much into that because then we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Um, but they're all interconnected. And you can, you can leverage each of these platforms really to put yourself out there in different ways. One with video, one with what's happening in the now, and one that's telling your business as a story over time. When it comes to Instagram, we have a slightly younger demographic. So the younger demographic that's using it, although older demographics are starting to move in now and starting to adopt Instagram. Part of the reason it's faster moving is because you have some younger demographics that are in there looking at the content. They need it fresh. They need it now. They want to find out what's happening in this moment. So it's a faster moving platform. If we look at the, the post and everything that's going on with it, we can see some things like reach again when you put it out there. We have comments, shares, so there's no shares in here. We have profile visits, and then we have saves. So one of the really, really important things when it comes to Instagram marketing is you want to have content that's shared and that's saved. So saved means that they're telling, they're indicating that it's an important content to them, right? They wanna be able to get to that content again in the future. It's showing that they're committed, there's something inside that content that's resonated with them. So that's, stronger than, a, I can like something, right? Doesn't mean I want to look at it again in the future or I want to associate myself really with that content over time. But with a save, that's what it's indicating. It's showing that for somebody. So that's what Instagram is looking for. They're looking for shares and saves. Just going back, circling back to some of these different things. So if we look over, you can see there's two different posts, right? Put out by me, you can see 2103, and then you see 17, 1, 1, and 4. And you can see that there's different reach in here, right? So I had 110 reach for that post, and then over here I had 256 reach out of it. The reason I, in this post, have more reach is because I shared it on my personal page. So I have my personal page, Jamie the Coach, and then I have my business page over here. So that's showing you the difference, right? If I just put something out there, this is without sharing on my personal page, 110, and I more than doubled it by putting it on my own personal page. Now there is, you know, if you're in a business, right? If you have a business and you want to share your business and you want to get it out to the people who you're personally connected with, there's a fine line, right? If all I'm doing is sharing constantly my business over to my personal page, it's kind of kind of a road, right? The connection with other people is going to feel like it's salesy all the time. So there's got to be some give and take with it. So I don't super often share the stuff in my business on my personal page unless it's meaningful, unless it's a milestone or something like with this, the, the talk that I'm having today. So when we're producing content, we're going to talk about the golden rule the golden rule, the three different types of content that you always want to produce. And these are going to be the highest performing content for you. So the reason why you want to produce certain content is because when you put out something on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media platforms, you're getting judged in a certain way, right? Not by the people around you, but the, Insta the Facebook and Instagram algorithm, right? If I put out content that doesn't get user engagement and people don't like it, it's telling Facebook, Inst Instagram, it's telling them that I'm not putting out engaging content. So then the next time I put out content, I get a little penalty in it. If I keep producing content that doesn't engage with people, then my reach is going to slowly go down because it's going to think of me, my business, as one that's not engaging people. And again, Facebook wants, 
Instagram wants, the social media platforms want the best user experience so they're on the platform the longest. So that's why it's important to always produce high quality content, co content that's meaningful, and we'll talk about what that even is when you're looking at a business profile. What it comes back to is connecting with people. So these are the three different things. When you're posting on a business page, you wanna either inspire someone, you wanna educate them, or you want to entertain them. I mean, those are big things. Let's actually talk about how it works inside of a business. All right, so inspiration is one of it. So I pulled this one, I'm not affiliated with it, but I loved it over here by female entrepreneurs. Um, this was on Instagram where this talks about how, and I think for a lot of people who start their own business or want to get into their own business, you get this feeling that, you know what, there's already seven, like 70,000 people doing what I want to do. How am I going to be any different than that? How am I going to stand out in that? And so what this post is showing is that there's a bread aisle, right? The aisle is, that's it, it's bread. It's really huge aisle bread, but there's so many different brands in there. And there, there's that many brands because people, people will buy those. People, there's enough people out there to go around. There's enough business to go around. So this is why I, I think this post is inspirational because as a business, and I'll say this for my own too, growing my own business is that sometimes you're like, How, there's other people doing it. Why would anyone want to use my business when there's 100 other local businesses who also do digital media or coach social media or do social media for people? So over here, uh, Food for Strength. This is another local, so this is actually affiliated. So this business, Food for Strength, they do healthy prepared meals. So you can order if you want, like I don't wanna, I don't wanna cook, right? I don't wanna have to do any cleaning. So you can go on and you can order healthy meals. You can decide, all right, I want 20 different healthy meals. They give you uh, between 12 and 18 different options. So it could be like shrimp and broccoli, or it could be, um, it could be classic salmon on the list. So there's a bunch of different options for, um, Food for Strength is the company that started Leo's Table. So they actually work in unison. Food for Strength is in the basement of Leo's Table. So both of these businesses I helped work for in the past. So this is one of these things, this post, this is on Facebook and you can see some, um, see some analytics behind it as well. This is something that's inspirational, right? When you look at what they were from 2014 to 2016, they bought their, like they had their own Tupperware. They bought their own glass bowls and everything and they were giving those to people and now today, they have a whole process behind it. They have their own labels behind it, stickers. They have everything. They've figured it out at this point. But it, it shows people that you know there's a, there's a starting place. We're all at a starting place. It shows people that we can't, in some respect, judge ourselves and our starting place to where other people are at in their middle or their ending place. So we can go from in the kitchen making everything at home, right? to having actually a production facility locally where they can put everything together and they can do it and package it up in a really crisp, nice way with online ordering access they didn't used to have. So education, education aspect of it. So milestones are a great way to educate people, right? On what your story is, where you're at right now in your business, but there's different ways to do it. And before I get into the ways over here, there's, there's some do's and don'ts, right? So I could educate someone, I can be like, yeah, psh, psh, right, I just sold 1,000 products. What do you think about that, right? I could do it in a showy way where I'm like, look at me, 1,000 products sold, right? Or I could do it in a way that says, I like, I want, really want to appreciate the 1,000 people that I've worked with over the past and that I really got to know and, and been able to help out. There's different ways you communicate the same message and that's what we're thinking about when we're doing the education of our business. This is, a, this is actually the story. So if you see over here, this is Instagram newsfeed, how it pops up, right? And this is the Instagram story. This is an immersive experience. So when you have your phone, it's the whole screen that it takes up on your phone. This takes up part of your screen, right? As you're scrolling through different things. This is the whole screen. This is an ad. So if we're looking at education, we'll manage your day. If MindBody, this company, uh, has done it right, they're advertising to people who've seen their content before or affiliated with content before. So they're not trying to sell to somebody who has never seen their product. 
Now, one important thing about social media is that you have two different sides of social media. You have an organic side and you have a paid side. So organic side is what you're, right, you're posting on your newsfeed, you're posting in Facebook, you're posting on Instagram. That's your organic side. Those are the people who have committed to follow you, to like your content, um, to engage with your content. And then you have the paid side, which is trying to reach new people or trying to sell to people. One thing that's really important in the distinction between uh, personal and business pages is that you do not want to look like a business. You do not want to look like a business unless you are selling. If you're trying to, I mean, we all know, right? We know when someone's trying to sell us from a while away, right? We know if someone's going to walk up to us, try to approach us, or we know if we go to an event and you see someone who's staring you down, right? Or that person with a clipboard, you're like, oh, please don't look at me. Please don't look at me. Ah, they looked at me. They're coming over, right? You can see those stuff from a mile away. And that's what we don't want to do on social media. So we want to post things that look like they're things that should be in the newsfeed, not like, all right, look at it, I saw my friend or my wife and then business, right? Because I'm going to scroll past that. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to create content that looks like it's from a personal page because you want people to get connected with it. Another thing you don't want to do is with social media, the organic strategy when you're posting on social media, on your Facebook or Instagram page, doesn't isn't where you're gonna build a ton of revenue in. It's just not. It's the place where you're building engagement, it's where you're getting brand awareness. The place where you make money on social media is when you actually do ads. And you're targeting people and saying, all right, now that you've seen my content in the past, I would like, here's an option for you to purchase something. I mean, it's the same thing like if you're walking down the street, right? And someone comes up to you out of nowhere and it's like, hey, buy my app. You're like, whoa, creeper, and you're going to run away from them, right? You, <laughs> it's, it's too early, right? It's too early to try to commit someone to selling them the first time you met them. That's the same thing you're thinking about with social media, right? You're building a relationship with them. You're getting to know them. They're getting to know your business over time, and eventually, after they got to know your business enough, then you're going to sell them, but you're going to sell them through ads. So this is an ad here. This is a workshop that I did before a social media series that I did. So this is just an education on education. And this is one of those ways to say it in a nice way. Like, hey, thank you so much, Glendale Ridge Vineyard, for hosting me and the social media summer series that I did. Over here, this is one way, the mission of the business, for people to get to know, what, you know, why are they, what are they following? What am I about? What is the business about? And that's the education component of it. So entertainment. There's a bunch of different ways to entertain. You have a little dog right in here. People love dogs, right? If it makes sense for your brand, right? If you're a dog lover, have your dogs in your brand because people love dogs. They love cats too, but they really love dogs <laughs> and food. Um, so we'll have a couple different pictures and I'll tell you why. So in here, right, it's not like a ha-ha, you're not laughing at it, but it's something where you like engage with it. You're like, oh, look at this. Like you can see some emotion that's going on in that content that draws you in, right? You, you may, again, like it. You may share it. You may save it. But it's something that's getting some feelings, right? When you're trying to connect with somebody, um, you know, you can think about different types of, con like in, in person, you can think about different types of conversation, right? You might have some small talk with somebody and then you might decide, all right, this is someone I actually want to have a conversation with or get to know more. This is the same thing we're talking about. If you're having small talk with somebody, it's not going to engage them. It's just not going to on social media. So you have to find a way to get past some of that small talk, not like the super heavy talk, but get some emotion behind what's going on here. And this picture elicits some emotion in here. Over here, this is something that I pulled. And if you can see it, you can see that he actually had it printed for his car, so when he's driving by, it looks like he's at his barber shop in there, and that's fun and entertaining. Over here, this is a little bit more specific. So one of the brands I work with, 5050 Fitness Nutrition, and Hadley, we had this thing called May Madness. We had this team challenge where people um, would join a team, and then you had to come into as many classes as you could as a team. You had to, if you got bonus points, if you worked out with team members, you had a bunch of different challenges the weekly that happened. So over here, this was 
one of the teams in the, in the challenge. It was Team Shameless. <laughs> they're the one who, they're the team who went on to win it, everything, but this was a post leading up to it. They hadn't won it yet. This was just an entertaining, like, all right, like get people fired up out of it. And we see uh, content wise, you know, it had 70, 78 likes in it. So it showed that it was really engaging for that specific audience because there are people following that gym. Great. So we're going to talk about the bank. So now we've discussed some different ways, right? Some different types of content, how you would post, how do you engage people, what happens when you post, how can you tell if one's engaging, the other one's not engaging. You can see now we have a, a formula to be able to see some of that stuff. So we got some information behind it. But when it all comes down to it, especially when you're, when you're trying to do this for a business, how much time do you have? How much time in your life do you have to be able to do social media for your business? So this is the bank concept. So one of the things that for social media platforms is timing. Timing of posts is really important. It's important for a couple different reasons. First off, um, let's, uh, let's think about a day, right? A day. One of my brands that I have, um, they have 3,600 followers. Now, about, about noon, there's about 700 followers that are on at that point. And then it starts to build up. Then the Facebook has charts to be able to show you when your people are on. Then two, it builds up a little bit more. And then it peaks around 8 p.m. And then drops back down. By 10 p.m., it bottoms out. And then it's really low when it gets to that midnight till 5, 5 a.m. and then starts to build back up. Now, if I post it, right, let's say I'm like, all right, I want to, I got to post together, I spend a bunch of time, I'm going to post it at midnight. I'm going to post it at 2 a.m. There's not enough active people on there to engage with your content to tell Facebook that your content's engaging enough to open it up to a bigger community out of it. So timing is really important. And then spending your time is really important in there. Um, Consistency. So there's a lot of research out there saying, all right, when should you post? Should it be morning? Should it be afternoon? Should it be night? Um, for most brands, it's night. It's night. It's between 7 and 10 p.m. at night. The brands that I've worked with, it's night. But if you already, have, the, the one time it doesn't work is if you already have a strategy in place. Let's say that you already, right now, every day you post at 2 p.m. And your community is used to you posting at 2 p.m. Now, if you switch that up to 7 p.m. now, it's going to be completely out of when they're used to seeing you. They may not see your content now, even though that would be considered a peak time, but they're not used to seeing your content at that time. Now you're dipping down because you're not reaching as many people and it's signifying to Facebook and Instagram that you're not, you're not as engaging as a brand. So posting at night is where you're going to get the most people. Then you can get people right before bed who's checking their phone. Right? So the bank concept is if I have time, what am I going to do with that time? So when we're creating content, I'll call them credits, right? You have so many credits that you can use because you only have so many hours in, in your week that you want to put together content. So if you're a beginner and just starting, just creating content, it may take you a half an hour to put together a post, right? A meaningful post. You're not just throwing something together, you're thinking about, all right. I got some copy in there. You know, I've said, I put together a couple sentences that are talking about what this is. It, they're listening a feeling in it. I got an image that I've picked out that's really good, that really fits what this is. Good. And I've figured out the time I want to post it and then I put it together. So for someone who's a beginner, it could take about half an hour. Sometimes it could take over a half an hour for you to put together a post. So this concept is breaking down. Okay. If I'm a beginner, if I'm just getting into creating content, I get two credits per hour. Or if, I'm, if I've been doing it for a year to three years, I get four credits per hour. Or if I've been doing it for a long time, it just means I can do it more efficiently over time. And this is where, you know, as somebody who has a business, you have to think about how many hours a week. Some businesses are three hours a week that they can put into their social media. Some are five, some are 10. It depends. It depends on where you're at. This is just talking about the difficulty of posts, how much time, how many credits it really takes. A regular post is your baseline, how long it takes. 
if you're doing an event. So Facebook has a lot of awesome options inside of it. One of those is events. You can promote events through Facebook. Like this, it could have been promoted, promoted through Facebook. And when you do events on Facebook, not only do you reach your organic audience, but you reach anybody else who are looking at events in your area as well. So you get beyond your current community by using events. But they take longer, right? You gotta think about what's your time frame? What's the description for the event? What's the picture that you wanna use for the event? How do I format everything properly? Do I have tickets for the event? So there's, there's a lot more consideration that you have to do when you put in for an event. You have your stories, those ones where you just put up something quickly, what's happening in the moment, they don't take as long, right? You don't have to be as curated. It's what's happening now. Then you have your video. Video take longer. Um, we'll talk about video too in, in a second, why it takes longer and why it's really important when you're using social media for video, but it takes longer, right? So maybe it's because you have to do some video editing with it, or maybe it's because the settings inside of itself are robust. You have a bunch of different options. If you're picking the thumbnail, right? When someone lands on it and sees the video, there's going to be that immediate image that pops up right as they see the video. That's called your thumbnail. So you have to decide what's the thumbnail going to be. Is it going to be something inside of the video, right? Maybe I'm going to do it like 60% of the way of the video. You'll see that th thumbnail. So you see at the beginning, then you get 60% of the way. And be like, oh yeah, you connect it to it. So there's a bunch of different options when it comes into video. And then what ads, when you get in that paid side of it, it takes a long time to create and formulate ads. So prioritizing. When you have time and you have to figure out what I'm going to do, right? Uh, let's say that you figured out, all right, I'm a beginner. I get two credits per week, right? That means I can do two regular posts per week, uh, two regular posts uh, equal, uh, I said that wrong. <laughs> so you're a beginner and you have three hours per week and you get two credits per hour, <laughs> you get six posts that you can make in a week. So you're trying to think about, okay, where am I posting now? Am I doing it on Facebook? Am I doing it on Instagram? Am I doing stories? What am I, I got, I got limited time. Where am I going to put, where am I going to spend that time? So what I say is that the priority comes to Facebook first, most of the time. And the reason the priority comes to Facebook first is because the Facebook, they have, they have the most robust ads platform out there. So if you're trying to build a community, right? And then you're trying to actually sell a product to that community in the future, Facebook is the place to do it because you can get into demographic targeting. You, I mean, the targeting on it is, is amazing. Like you can get it to the point um, where you can see anybody who's watched any of your videos for 25% of that video or more. You can target that person or you can target someone who's watched 75% of your video specifically target that. When you're thinking about, you know, let's say I put out an educational pro, right? I did this, this goes on YouTube. I put this out and it's 60 minutes. You know, people may watch two minutes of it. Then some people may watch 10 minutes of it. Some people may watch the whole thing. I know that the person who's watched all 60 minutes of it is way more engaged than the person who's watched two minutes of it. So I can target that person who's watched 60 minutes of it because I know they're engaged and I can target them with an ad to buy my product because they're more likely to buy it than the person who only spent two minutes on it. So that's why it's important when you're thinking about, I have time, where do I put it in? Facebook, I, I usually suggest because there's so many different things. You can install code on your website. So any traffic that goes to your website, you can retarget them with your ads, you can upload email lists. There it goes, anyone who's interacted with your, any of your events in the past, anyone who's engaged with your content in the past. There's so many different things that you can do to retarget people when it comes to Facebook. So Facebook is number one, Instagram is number two, and then if you have enough time, then get into your stories, that authentic content. And then IGTV would be, the last place to put it in. IGTV, the Instagram version of YouTube, is growing right now. I mean, it's, it's not huge. There's not, a, a, it's nowhere close to YouTube right now. It's definitely a growing platform. It's going to be bigger in the future. But unless you're doing tons and tons and tons and tons of video content, it doesn't make sense right away to be using or spending your time on IGTV. So we're going to talk about some best practices. So when it comes to Instagram, I'm going to start off with Instagram. 
using 30 hashtags is where you're gonna reach the most people. That feels like a lot, I know. But the good news, using 30 hashtags is a ton. It's gonna get you more reach, it's gonna get you more followers out of doing that because you've had more indexing options for people to see it. But what you do is you create a list of core hashtags. So instead of being like, every time I post, I gotta come up with 30 hashtags, oh my God, this is, I'm, I can't do it. Like this is gonna take me a half an hour just to put in that many hashtags. So you'd figure out, 20 to 25 hashtags that really work for your brand, right? For me, again, social media marketing, social media tips, uh, empowered social media, I'm finding those core hashtags that I can copy and paste in there every time, so I'm only thinking about five. I'm just thinking about five hashtags that I'm gonna be using in each of those posts instead of that 25 or 30 hashtags. I've already knocked out a bunch of them ahead of time. I'm just copying and pasting into it. So this is just showing some of the hashtags. For instance, some of these hashtags will have been used millions of times. Some of, them ha ha some of the hashtags will have been used 100 times, or maybe 1,000 times, or 10,000 times. There's different hashtags, there's, has different popularity and use out of them. When you get into like a string of words, when you do like strings of words, then they become a little bit more niche, or less of the popular. If I say community, that's gonna be a really popular hashtag, but I say community first, that's gonna be a less popular hashtag because there's more things that you're incorporating into it. So on Instagram, best practices, it's a lot, but it's 30 hashtags. And if you set up yourself for enough of those core hashtags, it doesn't feel like a huge deal if you only have to do five and then make it specific to whatever you posted about inside of it. All right, the four foot rule, so this is me at a racing event I was promoting. So th there, was a, there was a period of time where it was, people got made for, fun of, for doing selfies, right? <laughs> I've been in that period of time before. Now, the reason why selfies work is because it becomes intimate. This is, you know, if, if we're looking at someone way in the distance now, it's not meaningful, but boom, you get me right up here, you feel more a part of the experience. So the four foot rule is trying to get your content, get yourself as close to or whatever it is, as close to it to be more engaging. If you're too far away, someone might just scroll past it, not even realize that you're in it or they don't see anything because it's too far away. And then carousels. So on Instagram, you can, you can do a single picture, right? You can post a single picture or you can post multiple pictures. That's called a carousel. When I decide up to 10 pictures I can post at the same time. Now what's happening this year, uh, and, and last year and into this year with carousel specifically, when you do that more than one picture, is Instagram is giving you a bonus out of it. If for this, this is one of three, it tells you right here, this is you know that it's a carousel. If someone goes past it and doesn't interact with your first picture, it's going to pop up in your newsfeed again with a different picture out of that three. A second time, this is something that's, that's pretty new that people are finding out about. So it's like bonus, right? You get seen two times for that same post, but what it's doing for Instagram is they're learning, right? All right, we have 10 pictures in that post. The first one wasn't the good one. The third one was a good one. So then they learn what people are like, what people are engaging with. That helps them with their, with their algorithm. But for us right now, it gives us a bonus because we get to see twice instead of just once for a regular picture because of using carousels. So Facebook, Facebook uh, short videos. And we, we broke into videos and I won't go too much further than that because you can retarget off of videos. You can retarget people who've watched your videos. In the past, it becomes an asset, right? If somebody um, clicks on my content, right? I can't retarget them, but if that person watches you know, 30 seconds of my video, I can now retarget them specifically because I can retarget someone who's liked my content, but I can't specifically target them because they've liked my content. It comes like this overall engagement pool. When with video, I can specifically target that person who's watched 25% with a follow-up video, the person who's watched 50% with a different follow-up video because I know they're more engaged, and the person who watched 95% with a sell video because I know they're, they're that engaged with my 45-minute video, that they're probably ready to see some more content of mine and are willing to pay for that. Picture stories. I love these. So when you put more than four pictures, you get this plus on that side. What forces you to do 
if you, you know, read through and you set it up, click on the pictures below to see how the day went. You can click now. So it forces more engagement. Like, all right, you got some, in, you piqued my interest. What, did, what went on? Maybe there wasn't anything fun. Maybe there wasn't anything interesting. But I want to find out if there was and what happened inside of that. So then you would click that plus nine in there and you can see the other nine photos that are involved with it. And you can have it be a story from start to finish with that. But it creates more engagement because people are clicking on your content. They become engaged. They're looking at more stuff. They can then choose any of those nine pictures in there to like any of those nine pictures. Again, boom more engagement out of your content. So it gives another opportunity for someone to flow through and engage with your content. Use community faces. So these two people are big in the 50-50 fitness nutrition community uh, for powerlifting. So this woman over here, she's actually, she, she has the world record in weight lifted in powerlifting competitions for her age. So these are people that are well known in their community. If I use someone no one's seen before in my social media, you don't know them, you don't engage with them, there's no feelings associated with them. But if they see you, they know your brand, they know your team out there, you post it again, they're familiar with it, you're building it. All right, so 2020 trends as we're winding down. So one of the trends in 2020 is no filter. People want more genuine content. They don't want you spending three hours really making sure everything is completely perfect and setting it out. That's how it used to be. That's what it used to be on Instagram, it's not now. People want more authentic content. There's options when you go to post to use different filters. Instagram has some options, right? Let's change some of the lighting. Don't use it. It's producing better without adding filters onto it. Longer copy. So with Instagram, another thing that was, um, and this is both platforms, is to get to know someone, you have to give them information about you. So. It's performing better now than ever to use longer form copy, to give someone a story in that. It used to be you had to do a sentence or two sentences on Instagram and that's what was performing. That's not what's performing now. It's longer content so people can get to know your business. And then community. So actually when I say longer content copy, this is an example of it, right? So I talked about um, an event that I'm helping to put on called PodCamp Western Mass. So I have my sentence up here and then boom, I go into and I talk about some other businesses that are associated with that. And then I have my hashtag. So it, it opens it up more. It's not just boom and done. It, for, it gives people a reason to click read more on there. And then community. Community is really important. Um, one of the changes, one of the things, you know, if we think about, go back to when I first started social media, why I got into social media was to connect with people is to uh, build friendships or get to know new people out of it. it. Facebook has prioritized building community out of it. So when, when you're thinking about producing content, right, when you're being inspiring or, or engaging, entertaining, you wanna think about also a bigger part of your community. Who's inside of your community? Sometimes that's testimonials, right? If someone's used your product before in the past, and they've endorsed your product, using some of those to show that the people in your community love what you're doing out of it. That's a picture of community. So in the end, when it comes to social media, the strategy is to be authentic, to be genuine, to give some feelings behind what you're doing, and doing it in a way that connects you with the people who are following your brand. All right, so that's my presentation today. <laughs> <laughs>